Mark III approach to coaching, this Mac. Well, there are four dudes. And uh, we will, you know, there are a lot of resources out there on the internet, and I encourage you to make sure you can find more about this because this is really just touching briefly. But we, the aim for, 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 for Cairns Hockey is to increase the four target behaviours, and for you as a coach. And the first target behaviour is reinforcement. I know time and time again we hear about this, but we want to reinforce effort. Someone's just run the whole field to try and chase back. They've tried hard all week, or all season, or all year. Recognise that, as well as good performance. This, that may sound obvious, but it's, it's, it's crucial to do that. And the second part is mistake encouragement, which can be verbal and non-verbal. Nobody likes to make a mistake, no one intentionally goes out to make a mistake. But when you do make a mistake, an athlete does make a mistake, as a coach, it's like, you'll get it, you'll get it back. It's about tucking the hands and going, you'll get it, keep going back. I'm being very simple here, but the, these are the, I don't have a lot of time, but these are the behaviours um, which we can flesh, flesh out in more detail at a later time. Um, so if someone makes a mistake, encourage them. Really important. Now, corrective instruction. When we're giving corrective instruction, it links very much to technical instruction, because you'll find that kids generally say they actually get the most out of coaches who teach them new things. They learn. It's good to be encouraged and reinforced, but if you're actually not helping me to get better, it actually sucks, because I want a coach that can teach me and help me. So um, you want to do it in an encouraging, supportive fashion, and also, like I would with my young volleyballers, the ball comes at them and it hits them on, and, and they're moving while they're hitting the ball. And I'm like, remember, wait for the ball to come to you, because you want to be still in volleyball. And it's a technical thing, you can do it, and as they get closer and closer, that's it, that's your best, or that's, that's it, you've almost got it. So encourage them until they get there. So they're the four do's, pretty simple stuff. You don't need a PhD to do this. But unfortunately, a lot of coaches, when the research was originally done, they found that coaches really don't actually have an idea of how often they do these tasks or these behaviours. It's actually the kids and the parents or the umpires or the spectators. They don't know how often you reinforce. They don't know how often you encourage. As coaches, we tend to be a little bit less aware of our own behaviours. So this is just to bring it into your awareness and to make you conscious of that. And that's how you improve. And then we've got the don'ts. So we've got the do's and the don'ts. And the aim here is to reduce four undesirable behaviours. So one of them, the first one is non-reinforcement. Kind of an opposite of reinforcement. I just run the, 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 the field, I just train all week, and I've been to every single training session for the, last, for the whole camp. And I'm not doing it to get reward, but if I'm told, hey, well done, it, it means a lot. Whereas if it's just taken for granted, then I think it's disheartening. It can be really disheartening. Or uh, someone's on the phone and old Billy's done a fantastic move and he's just got the best guy. He's so proud of himself because he's worked so hard and you're on the phone or you weren't paying attention. So non-reinforcement is also linked to um, attention. We're just waiting for that. tend to enjoy less, like themselves less. It's one of the enemies of, of enjoyment. So any kind of non-verbal or verbal punishment and punishing of laps. We want our kids to want to do laps. So don't ever teach kid, kids to do laps because you're actually teaching them to hate the very thing that we want them to do, which is exercise. So not a good idea to punish with laps. And no one means, needs, to make, needs to make a mistake. So yeah, punishment is, is not the way. Um, punitive instruction. So then that's giving instruction in an unkind or sarcastic fashion. So, oh god, how many times do I have to tell you all? It's alright guys, we're only 48 points down, we can get one goal. It's very demeaning and sarcastic. And some people just aren't aware that that's actually not very nice. And we can think we're making light, but we're not. So um, this isn't a touchy-feely um, uh, workshop. This is, yeah, be, again, it's all about focusing on the do's. If you take care of the do's, you probably even won't have, to, won't have to worry about the don'ts. This is just to bring them to your awareness. And regimenting behaviours. So constantly verbally telling someone what to do while they're out on the field, that's a very controlling behaviour. Um, if, if you've taught them and you've coached them, let them play. 
you know, if, if, if uh, some of you might watch some, some boxing or some mixed martial arts, and half the time I don't know who's doing the fighting, the people out, outside of the cage or the fighter. At the end of the day, the fighter or the athlete has to make their own decisions. So, you know, don't be that controlling coach. Let them play, be supportive, give corrective feedback, use the do's, but avoid all that really controlling, controlling behaviours. Um, controlling regimenting behaviours also is not allowing, not allowing feedback, not allowing input. If, if an athlete says, how about we do this, sir, or how about we do this, miss, or have a think about it. You don't have to go with it, but show that you're open to allowing the, the athletes, the young people, to decide what they might want to work at. And there'll be a video after this um, explaining that. The graph on the bottom right shows that the high, high perform, one study showed a high-performing group had a, had a high ratio between positive comments and every criticism. So in between, good effort, well done, next time, oi, you didn't cover me, get back and cover me, but if, if, if we're talking between teammates, um, but there's a lot more positive than, it, than there is between, for negative. So, that's the map. The overall principles, the overall values behind it, or the ideas, is to emphasise and reinforce effort, as well as outcome. You can control effort, unless a kid hasn't slept, his mum and dad's just been in an accident, and something else is happening, giving effort that day is probably pretty hard. So you've got to look beyond effort sometimes and go, hey, what's going on? Are you okay? Um, and sometimes it's not that they're slackers, there are other things happening. But effort is the thing that the kids could control, and you can control as well. Outcome comes from effort. The good thing is if you get it in the, in the kids' heads that effort leads to outcome, once they get their outcome, you can go, see all that effort paid off, and then it'll start to reinforce and will become internalised. And they'll know if I want to get this outcome, I've got to what? I've got to work. I've got to give effort. It doesn't take long to, to, to get that um, up here. Help your clients, help young athletes to be the best they can be by giving them individualised attention, set goals that are for them. And that some kids might want to work on their dribbling, others might want to work on their shooting. Yes, you have certain goals, but if they're most motivated to, to learn something, take advantage of it. It makes complete sense. Define success as maximising your own genetic potential. Success is not being better than Joe Blow. At least that's the leadership principle if you're operating as a MAC coach. And emphasise the importance of having fun with getting better. You can control that, you can celebrate that. Heck, you can be the, you, you can not win a game all year and feel completely good about it. And I know it sounds corny, but you can. If you've improved and you've had a good time and you love each other, you'll, you'll come back next year. Or how, how many teams do you know where they've won and they hate each other and they don't play each other with each other next year. So there's a trade-off between relationship and outcome. Um, when you're working with the youngsters, probably go with the relationship more than the outcome. So the take-home message. Coaching is a measurable skill with eight categories of observer, observer, observable behaviours. Those being trained by coaches operating from a mastery approach to coaching style develop hey, lower dropout rates, so that could mean better team cohesion and stronger clubs, healthier clubs financially as well, more parents involved, higher self-esteem and more loyalty, lower performance anxiety, so greater creativity and more willingness to get risks and possibly perform better, and greater enjoyment of their sport and more determination. So we're going to leave you with a, a video on autonomy supportive coaching. It's shown very similar results that the MAC coach, that the, that the MAC coaching training has done, in that it's, it's also helped, shown to reduce dropouts quite significantly. So have a look at that. I think they can say it better than I can. Um, thanks to Matt from Kentucky for putting this on. And um, if there's any questions or comments, please leave your comments and we'll attend. Um, you can find me on, um, on the internet, Can Sports Performance Clinic. Um, yeah. Thanks, Matt, and um, yeah, focus on those do's, and um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Rob.